Hey guys, I'm the real Jesse. And I'm Peter Parkour. No, no, wait. No, that's. Oh, yeah. No, no, wait. <laughs> I'm the real Jesse. I'm Peter Parkour. And we are the, the Distorted, Distorted Theorists. Theorist. That's why we get these shirts. First of all, before yeah. we get into this video, I gotta give our wives props. They just surprised us with some brand new t shirts with our names on them. We got our own logo. Had no idea they were doing it. We came here to record this video for you guys about Hawkeye, and they had them all set up. God bless their hearts. Look at this. One big shot for the boys. Take it away, Pete. All right. So uh, this is probably the first video in a while that anyone's seen me. I mean, you had your Pokemon unboxing. I got them. I got them. You em. had the uh, the three reaction videos for the episodes uh, of Hawkeye. Which we're about to talk about. Yep. Yeah, so which I'm, I'm super, super excited Something to talk about. Something else has happened since you were last sat in this chair as yes, well. Yes. We, uh, we noticed a quite... A, a large jump in we our did. subscriber we fan base, yeah. and well, I say fan base. I don't uh, know if you're fans of us. I am a fan. Can we round up? It, it was if we round up, it was 150 new subscribers uh, mm. within the last week, and that I mean, I'm sure it shows you. Like I said, you've been out for a while, but um, it means so much to us guys. Obviously, what we're doing here is reaching a lot of people in many ways. And the support is pouring in from different directions, yeah. and we love to see it. So, and however you may have heard of us, whether it's word of mouth or. Right. Word of mouth. Um, <laughs> Perusing. Uh, yeah, we, we thank you for it, and we, we hope do. that you we stick do. around with us for the uh, the long run, because this is only the beginning. And so. I mean, we got our own logo now, Who's so... Who's to say we won't have some merch? Ooh, you never know. We're working on some things in the background for your supporters, so keep keep watching the videos, and, you, and we'll let you know. But that's enough about you guys. Now it's time to Not talk about something that's a little Let's more go. important. Um, is uh, Hawkeye. That's right. So Hawkeye has been out for several weeks now. Uh, you've already seen Jesse's yes. uh, reaction videos. And we haven't talked about it. We made sure to stay mum from each other um, so that we could do this video off the cuff for you guys and do the breakdown and review. Yeah, so what we're going to be doing now is a review of the first three episodes of Hawkeye on Disney+. Plus. That's right. So who is Hawkeye? Hawkeye, Clint Barton, uh, Jeremy Renner, and who else is Hawkeye? Kate Bishop. Haley Stanfield. That's right. And they, uh, as far as I'm concerned, they're knocking it out of the park. Uh, yeah, no, you, you I, was just, I was just going to say, I, I actually, one thing, uh, I guess start from the beginning, mm. so to speak. Uh, I love that they started right in with Haley Stanfield. It wasn't like, oh, this show is called Hawkeye, mm. and here's more Hawkeye. It was like, here's a beginning of a new possible hero, mm. and... Uh, Where'd that beginning start, Pete? Because it gave me the yeah, goosebumps as soon as I started seeing it. <laughs> right, right in the middle, we got a, we got an alternate view of Hawkeye jumping off whatever building that was in the uh, the Jatari invasion in Avengers. Such a classic. I mean, mm. you guys can see it back there. It holds true to me. Uh, I got that poster right after it started coming out and sits behind us here in every video for a special reason because it was pretty much for us where it all started. Mm. So. Um, but yeah, so the two of them interacting with each other as they as they move through. First of all, we see Hawkeye doing his own, or sorry, Clint doing his own thing with his yeah. family, and we see Kate dealing with her own family issues. And then through the jigs and reels, she gets associated with Hawkeye by picking up the Ronin suit. Right. The two of them meet. He's trying to clear her name. And like even now, I mean, we're into episode three, and you can see that the family theme is still tying in with Echo. You know, mm. we're talking about her uncle and dealing with, I guess. Or, or cousin, <laughs> whoever that gentleman is that works with her in the uh, tracksuit ma uh, mafia. Oh, he's uh, uh, as far as I used to know his name, but he's someone completely different. Well, I don't think they're brother and sister, from what I'm gathering. They just refer to the same uncle, so I'm not sure. But nonetheless, again, the family ties are there. So yeah, and it's it's true because like like you said, we see Clint and his family. Yeah, we see Echo and her father. That's right. And we see Kate and her mother and. Swordmaster, yeah. who at one point, I believe, was an Avenger. I think he was kind of... Wait, a... I'm straight up off the cuff here. You're saying this guy is Swordmaster, like the stepdad dude? Yeah. I did not know that. I'm pretty sure it's gentlemen. Swordmaster. <laughs> like, uh, come for me in the comments if I got his name wrong. But yeah, he's, there's a reason oh. that he's good with the swords. Yeah, like it seems, I know, now that you say it, now that you say it, I know, uh, with, like, even when they were doing the fencing and that, mm. and, and she was buying up swords, I think the... Uh, yeah. My mom was like, she was like, why do you have so many swords here? Uh, makes sense now. <laughs> and, then, and then he got the Roman sword, which we saw at the very, well, we already saw it being used, but yeah. then we see it at the very end. That of, retraction, like, I love that. I was like, love that sword. I, I, was, I had to think first because I was like, I don't think that was in the first one because he was just doing the, the mm. wipe. But um, when that 
retracted and, and then detracted, I guess is mm. the word. Um, I was like, oh, that's a nice touch. Retracted. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Uh, but nonetheless, wrote a book. Uh, I wrote a book. Um, but nonetheless, no man, it was so cool to see. And like, I'm, I was actually surprised they leaned on Ronan uh, and that little bit. Like, I mean, we only mm. seen him for a smidge in Endgame, um, so it was actually kind of cool that they leaned on that a nice bit as like the the propelling story. We'll say mm. after the call. Right? And our uh, so another uh, big proponent, like we've mentioned, we've already got our Hawkeyes, yeah. and we've got Echo. And Echo yeah. is someone who's actually has been confirmed. It's not a spoiler or anything like that. It's confirmed yeah. that she is going to be getting some form of her own treatment, show, some form whether of it's a mini series, a one off. We're not totally sure. And she, I, I'm, I'm, I haven't checked, I haven't fact checked this yet, but yeah. I'm pretty sure that she is also played by a hearing impaired actress. I don't know. Oh, like you mean just like the Eternals uh, yes. character was. And please tell me her name because I forgot it in the last video and I kind of perused over it. What was the... Oh, you're blanking too? You wrote a book. I did. Yeah. Anyway, uh, no, I get what you're saying. Mm. Um, is she hearing impaired in real life? Yes. I am unsure. Uh, um, as far as I know. I, for I, Echo, I am unsure is what I'm saying. Mm. Um, but man, they even like doing the song language. I mean, it's something like it, it's just a new oh, element yeah. yeah, that they're bringing into the movies. And uh, I don't know if you caught this, but in some scenes, yes, they did like have the subtext or the, um, so, I wrote subtitles. a book, uh, subtitles, there you go. And, um, but when she was talking to Clint, when she made, made him get on tide, there was no subtitles. They relied on just mouth movement, hand movement. I thought that was mm. pretty cool. Cause it was like, let's put them, let's put the viewer in that moment and live it with the character. So I mm. thought that was really cool. And again, where, where we're showing that Clint, where she says you're relying too much on your technology and he makes a yeah. joke about, well, I use a stick, <laughs> two, two sticks, sticks and a string piece of water or something. Yeah. <laughs> and she's referring to his hearing aid. And then we realize that once again, he's the human he is. of the Avengers. And uh, I did lean on that in one of my reviews. I was saying, you know, like, mm. They were really like they're showing the repairing of injuries and like, ooh, mm. let me check that out for you. And you don't really see that in Avengers movies or the big like fast paced super one because mm. no one, you, you can't slow down the story like, faster. oh, let me check on you, you know. And they're gods. You're dealing yeah. with Iron Man who's got a suit of armor. Yeah, You've he's got just like, Thor <sighs> who just doesn't up. take any damage. You've got Spider Man who's got a healing factor right. like Wolverine and Deadpool. Right. So when you see Clint get hurt, he's hurt. And that's pretty much what that comes down to. No, but, but you know, and and that's something, and, and that's where the show is different from the movies, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and I think that's what this show is all about, trying to just show us different sides mm -hmm. of the heroes and what they actually go through in real life when when the cameras are off of them, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, so. And then there's one more cast member. the The most important cast member of them all. Oh. Is Jolt. The puppy. The puppy. The puppy. Who plays Lucky the Pizza Dog? Who did play a large part in the comic by Matt Fraction and David. Uh, uh, I, uh, Asia? Uh, now, I didn't get a chance to read that comic, but I know you've delved into it. I don't know if you finished it, did you? Or oh, yes. Yeah, you finished it? Okay, yeah. so I just know, like, what is the dog's role in the comic versus what we've seen in the uh, TV, uh, in the show? Is it same? Or? He's a dog. Okay, so he don't, he don't like, play a bigger role. Than he's not, like, super dog or bad dog. Okay, no, right. he's the kind of dog that'll come up <laughs> oh, and bite sure. someone's arm when, when the tracksuit mafia gets involved right, and everything right, like that. Right, right. But he's just his little buddy in, in the comic. Just like and, a sidekick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just a conversation piece. Yep. So, but uh, yeah, and he's, uh, there's been set photos that have been released of, of Jolt interacting with Haley Stanfield on set, and it was, he's, he's the goodest of all the boys. He is. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, like, uh, <clears throat> yeah, and then, um, well now, so in episode three now, um, fast forwarding a little bit, I guess, um, her dad, spoilers, obviously, at this mm. point, <laughs> uh, bites, bites the sword, so to speak. Mm. Are we convinced that that is... Clint as Ronan. Yes, I am. You think so? Yes, when I've heard whispers. Uh, you know, we can only factor in whispers every now and again uh, that it may be someone else wearing the Ronan suit and maybe Clint adapted from that person. Uh, no, as far as I know from the comics, Ronan is Hawkeye. Is he it just basically, it's the same thing as when um, uh, Steve Rogers in the comics became, when he lost the Captain America title. And he became someone else. He was, for a time, U.S. agent. Yeah. <gasps> who we've seen as someone else. Um, but then he took up the moniker again. So as far as I know, okay. and I am... If, if, if it isn't, it's a great surprise. But I am convinced that that is 100% Ronan. That is Hawkeye. Okay. That is Clint. All right. <clears throat> cool. Um, so it takes place in New York. And there's not really a whole lot to talk about because it's New York. All of the Marvel <laughs> stuff, for the majority of it, actually. Some aside of it, from a, a couple San Francisco stints. In Germany. Germany. Civil War? 
Yeah, no, I know. Oh, okay. I mean, I mean the bulk, I guess, of the movies. Obviously, Ant Man's in San Francisco, and I think uh, Venom, if we're factoring in Sony here, also takes place in San Francisco. So, mm. uh, we're back to New York for this one. It's Christmas time. It's nice. Um, you get the Christmas music. I'm kind of digging that because it is reminding me of all my past ones, like Home Alones and and know, it's the and it's the same time of year as well. So it gets you into Christmas spirit with a bit yeah. of Marvel. Yeah, no, exactly. And uh, there's three episodes left now. As I said, we're at the mid season finale. Mm. Um, there's three episodes le left, which should take us right up to like towards Christmas Eve. Now you had mentioned that you never know they might hit us with like a double episode at the end, just like they hit us with a double episode at the beginning and, and time it down a little bit. Because they can make that work. Because if they do or they release an episode next week and then two episodes the following week right. the next day oh what is what's that movie that's I think it's there? the Matrix I'm not sure no, it's nothing, it's no. nothing important Spider-Man no oh, way oh that's the don't one, listen right. this guy is coming out in, in two weeks and from now and yes we got our we got our tickets we locked them down mm. so don't worry about it we're going to have our review and everything um, now one person we haven't seen and like I said we only got a couple of episodes left is uh, anyone who's watched Black Widow in those end credits scenes is we know that's right uh, she's coming for, or we assume she's coming for Clint because of what she was told. Mm. Um, so Florence Pugh hasn't made an appearance yet. So what do you think? Do you think she's going to show up? I certainly hope so. I mean, there was a reason that they put that hook into the end of Black Widow in well, the end credits scene to say like, and, and they've mentioned after. Black Widow multiple times so far mm. in this episode in bad light, good light, uh, you know, memories. Um, so they're they're not letting us forget is, is no. what i'm thinking right so but do you think she will show up as like a main focal point as in like uh you know chasing after clinton let's say the second last episode or finale or do you think it's going to be another in credit oh she's arrived type thing i don't know maybe there could be something related to the tracksuit mafia like in the comics it's related to somebody different but in this time that they're using they could be using elena or the countess for anything like that and well in my mind the reason i asked that question is because as i said in my review and I know you've seen it, is they keep referring to this uncle. Now, I've been, you know, <clears throat> they didn't show his face. I don't care what you say. They didn't show his face. He, he has a black kind of suit on with the cufflinks. Mm. And they still didn't reveal any name, any rhyme or reason to what his uncle suddenly appeared. However, mm. I said I have my thoughts on who I think it is. I mean, it's no secret. I know who the, it is. You know who it is. Mm. Well, if you think you know who it is, I, I think I know who it is. Mm. So if you know who it is, you tell them who you think it is. It's Wilson Fisk. It's the kingpin. He's confirming my thoughts, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. So the kingpin is was rumored way back when that he was to appear in Hawkeye. But I've heard whispers that it's going to be played by the same actor who actually played Wilson Fisk in Daredevil, which was... Vincent D'Onofrio. Right. And if he shows up <clears> on <throat> this show, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to lose my shit. <laughs> because I watched all the Daredevils. They're sitting back there on my uh, movie show. <coughs> and that show was amazing. And he was He's so probably the best villain. He's right Remember up there with like, Thanos. <clears throat> he was slamming that head. Now, it was a lot more gritty then because Netflix owned it or what have you. Yeah, there's no um, reason this can't be gritty. True, true. But... We what do you think he's going to do? Okay, so Kingpin shows up. What's happening? Well, that's... See, that's going to be... Is this an arc they're going to give us later? Or is it like, no, here's the Kingpin. Here's a full episode of the Kingpin beating, no. beating your ass. I think what they're going to be doing is this is going to be like another little cameo. They'll probably introduce him because, again, in mm -hmm. the comics, mm -hmm. Echo's father, um, he had dealings with the uncle. Oh, okay. Okay. And, and he was part of that. And there's a... Um, uh, I believe the name of the uh, biker or the garage that uh, Echo pulls up to. Yeah, in Fat Man or something? Fat Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, isn't that like the Kingpin's like, nickname again? I that's what say Spidey calls that, him. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, there's so much that can happen in the next like three weeks. It's We're sad it. here. We're trying to be calm. We're trying to be cool and collected. But let's face it, No Way Home is in two weeks. I'm not trying to get off the Hawkeye, but... I feel like everything's about to be ripped out and under us like a rug. Mm, well, that's good. And I'm, yeah. and I'm glad because we need to have that because we haven't had that I for know. a while. We almost need like a, <clears throat> a, I say a reset, but like a propelling reset, if that mm. makes any sense to anyone Something out to there. Something to kind of, to jumpstart the, uh, the juices for everyone to get back into Marvel. Um, but uh, overall, I think that the show is great. The, the other thing I wanted to mention, yeah. and again, in terms of comic accuracy, is the whole sequence that they had in episode three relating like the to the car, the car chase. Yep, car chase. That's right out of the comics, too. I think is it was it? one okay. of the earlier ones, too. Okay. A couple of differences. Uh, uh, Kate comes out of the, the, the toy factory, and she's looking at the charger. 
And Clint says, my God, you're not going to do, we're not going to yeah. ruin a charger, which in the comic they're using the charger yeah. as opposed to the frigging monster Oldsmobile that they're using. And in now. that one, in the comic, if I remember correctly, I believe, um, <coughs> well, I guess Haley Steinfeld's character was driving the car, but Clint is out the window shooting. Yep. But in this one, they've reversed the role. So you can really tell that they're letting her have a spotlight mm. where need be, right? And the, the arrows, the pim arrows, the putty arrow, that was all part of that sequence Man, too. I love that. Right up to the, I believe that they went up right to the bridge with it too. So the whole part of that, the fact that they kept in line with the comics for it is huge. Again, it shows how much that these writers had their, show their love for the comics too. I mean, we're at the mid-season uh, finale now, or mid-season, we'll just say. Mm. And, uh, you know, uh, to be honest, I'll just quick quick review at the end here. Um, the first episode with the Avengers hook, you're always going to get me on that. You're never going to give me a bad episode if you show me the Avengers in that. Um, like I said in my last video, episode two, for me, uh, dragged a little bit. It was mm. more story heavy and no big, you know, reveal happened, uh, in my opinion. Well, we've seen Echo, yes, but mm. like, there was no big oomph, you know? But then the third episode just brought it right back around. We got the action, we got the Marvel mm. stuff, we got the Pam Arrows, we got the... Oh, kingpin, you know, cheek grabbing the laugh. Like you said, he has a very distinctive laugh. So overall, I'm digging it right now. Mm. Episode two did let me down mm. a little bit, um, but I'm hoping that the episode three now is a telltale of where we're going forward with this. So my honest review so. of it is, I am I am thoroughly enjoying it, mm. but in the grand scheme of things, I understand that again we're in the mid season. Oh, we haven't really we haven't revealed a whole bunch, and there's still plenty more that could come. Of course, the Hawkeye uh, series to me going forward isn't important. It's it's good to see that Hawkeye mm. finally gets his due. He gets his own little solo outing, whether it's in the show or a movie, but he got his show. Mm. Um, I'm like, Again, I am enjoying it. I'm enjoying the humor, the set pieces, the the characters, all this stuff that's going on. Um, it's just... It, it, I love it, but I don't at the same time. <laughs> Um, I obviously can't. Hate to marvel something. I know, and I'm, I am looking forward to each episode as they come out. Like if I'm off, I'm waiting for uh, my wife to come home so we can watch it. If I'm working, I can't wait to get home That's so right. I can watch it. But I don't have to worry about that because I just come right home and, and do the reviews. Um, but, <laughs> but beyond that, like. It's for me right now. It's all set out, see, seven out of ten. And see what, and and we'll just have to see what the other three episodes hold. Mm. Are you cool with that? Absolutely. Once again, guys, I'm the Rio Jossie. I'm Peter Parkour. And like I always say, keep, keep it real. real.